Good afternoon, everyone. This is day day two. Yeah, yesterday was Thursday, Friday. We got to hunt for the first time yesterday afternoon. This morning, we didn't go hunting. I don't think anyone did. We kind of scouted, trying to figure out where the deer are at. Uh, one of the locals told us that a lot of the deer are on private, not a whole lot on public. I don't, I don't really believe that because we found deer sign on the public. Anyway, today's this afternoon strategy. So Thursday afternoon we were riding around, we, we saw a, a decent buck, a shooter buck, and had that doe that was kind of walking to the truck like she was tame or been fed from the windows of vehicles. And that's only a little, like a 20 acre plot, a little less than 20 acres of public land. I've been torn whether to go there and hunt or go to another spot that I've been kind of cyber scouting. And Garrett finally talked me into going there. He said, look, we saw deer there. There was just down the road some more deer. It would be silly to, that none of us hunted at some point. You know, there's deer there, obviously. We saw a decent buck there. So that's where I'm headed. All right, this is the spot we saw the deer yesterday afternoon. The doe was right here in the corner. And I thought about hanging a stand right here in the corner to catch deer coming across here. But I want to take a peek around the corner real quick. I'm going to stay away from the edge of the woods just, just so I don't leave scent right there. I'm already seeing deer tracks all out in this field. There seems to be clover and other stuff growing out here that deer are going to love to eat. It's a little oak right here would be a good spot to sit. Okay, I picked this tree right here in this little cove of this field. And you know, typically I wouldn't want to hunt right here because a little edge of a field near a road, but here's the thing about it, that road hardly ever gets used from what we can tell. So the deer probably don't get interrupted much. These woods are so thick you can't even hunt them because if you get a deer close, to, you know, within 15 yards, so so many sticks you can't get a shot. But probably about 20 yards that way, it drops straight down to a, to a creek or something down there or a little small river. Anyway, I'm hoping that helps kind of funnel the deer right along the field edge here as they travel travel on top. I'm sure some of them probably go through the woods. But I can see a deer trail coming out right here in the, on this edge on the corner. So the deer are using it. To what degree, I don't know. But I've got a small little bur oak here. I think i got enough openings up there that I can get my stand and, and have opportunities to shoot across the field here. That's like 35 yards to the other side of this little cove. So I can shoot this whole stretch. Um, we saw two deer here yesterday, uh, Thursday afternoon, a buck and a doe. And then right past those woods over here to our right, on a private, we saw about six or eight. So there's plenty of deer right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get my st stand hung, and uh, we'll get started hunting. Yesterday I hunted a little uh, CRP point next to a cut bean field. This afternoon I'm hunting... Uh, the spot that Gary and I drove by Thursday afternoon when we were riding around scouting, we saw that uh, nice velvet buck. I don't think we got any footage of it. I don't even think we got a frame of a blurry deer running. There's a gravel road right over there that rarely gets driven, so I'm hoping that nothing comes driving through when there's deer in front of me, if deer show up. But I decided to get on the back side of this field just because, here, I'll kind of give you a basis of the lay of the land. Little field here, some thick woods right here behind me. It drops off sharp down to a little creek. Across the road, we have a house off in that direction. Then we have a field down to the south and there's some more woods there. So it kind of acts like a little funnel here also. So I'm hoping that this situation allows for kind of funneling the traffic of the deer. I'm also hoping that because it's just a you know, less than 20 acre spot that, that maybe it gets overlooked. Who knows, maybe it doesn't, but Gonna take a little chance.
interest to see if he'll come over here. So make it out of the field. I had these leaves in my way, and I don't think I got the shot on the main camera. But that one should have got it, and the one on my bow should have got it. It went in right behind the leg, maybe two or three inches back. Should have caught both lungs. He had trouble getting out of the field. He laid down, actually, and then he got back up and just walked into the woods. There's no doubt that's a lethal hit. <sighs> this is what's so cool. <laughs> I've had these deer in and out of here all evening. Had a spotted fawn and that spike uh, buck, or one, one antler buck. Well, they left after feeding a while, had a doe and a yearling come out. And then the spotted fawn and another fawn came out that was already shedding his summer coat. I'm figuring it was two different deer. Then that one antler spike came out and they fed across the field. And all of a sudden this buck comes running from across the road to join them, but he's kind of wanting to hang out with them, but he's kind of pushing them around. They were all leaving and I grunted real softly and he got his attention, he started coming this way. He looked and didn't hear any more grunting and the other deer were leaving so he trotted off to catch him. Right when he was getting into the woods, I grunted real loudly and I thought it was over with. Well, he turned around and come running back across the field. And I went to draw and he had stopped behind some, uh, this limb here where I couldn't shoot him so I had to stop mid-draw. He was looking, he started walking, I finished drawing and he stopped out there. I'm guessing he was right around 30 yards. I put my 30 yard pin low on him. Looks like he dropped into the shot some. So uh, it hit a little higher than, than it should have, but uh, or where I was aiming, but not by much. Oh, gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna leave my arrow here to mark the impact site. And the road's just over there, what, 75, 80 yards. So I'll just go there and wait for Garrett to show up. It'll probably be another 30 minutes to an hour before he gets here, depending on how soon he gets out of stand. I sent him a text that I got one shot. And so I don't know how quickly he's gonna come over here. I would hope that he would continue hunting till dark um, because that's what we're out here to do, kill the deer. And I'm in no big hurry. It's going to be cool tonight, so I mean, it's not going to go bad, and there's no sense of being in a rush. How's it going, Keith? Good, Phil. I'm doing okay. I'm a pretty happy camper. 
make a good shot? And, and to me, what I saw was a perfect shot. Pass through, mm -hmm. blood looks good on the arrow. The only thing that concerns me is he ran across the field and it was wobbly. Mm -hmm. I'm like, go down, go down. And then he, he laid down. And I'm like, okay, he's gonna be right there. Five seconds later, he gets up and, and slowly walks into the woods. He was probably five degrees quarter and two when mm -hmm. I shot him. I thought it was broadside now I reviewed the video and he was just slightly quarter to me. He went down quick mm -hmm. make me, and the way he was wobbling tells me, I'll show you the video, it tells me that he's hurt pretty bad but I don't like the fact that he got up but I think when he got up pretty quick after laying down I don't think he liked the cover and when he got into the woods it looked like he was about to stop so he may be just laying inside, well, the, woods. inside the woods. Yeah. 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 I saw 10 deer total throughout the evening. So definitely a good spot and uh, three long beards. He come from across the road. He must have saw those other deer in the field. He come running to join them. So then they were kind of working my way at first I thought. I had a 35 yard shot through a hole like this way back down the field. Yeah. And as soon as I was getting positioned, he stepped where I couldn't shoot him. I was like, Ugh. well, I was like, you know what? You know, I left my, my grunt call at home, forgot to bring it. And I was like, you know, I, remember I told you, I said I have a lot of success in the early season with grunting. Grunt to him a few times. Every time he'd look away, I grunt, and he looked back this way. He started walking my way. Just natural voice grunt? Yeah. So he started walking my way, and then the other deer, you know, that happy summer bound, kind of the little small deer started to go join that one antler buck. Well, he looked and saw it, and he went bounding all happily towards him. And I'm like, oh man, I lost my opportunity and again. And right when he was going in the woods, I grunt as loud as I could twice. And he got into, he bounded in the woods and turned around right back and come running across the field. And he stopped at 30 yards and took my time and I put what I think was a pretty good shot, but we'll see. Um, you know, he went down in the field and then he got up, he was real wobbly. You could see the blood pouring out of the exit one side. I'd say last rib, like right here, exit. Entry was probably like right there, just a few inches back behind the leg. I'm pretty sure it got one lung, maybe the back of the other one, and maybe Nick the liver will look at the blood and see if there's any dark blood. The blood on the arrow looks good, so he may be laying dead just inside the woods there. At this point, he almost looks like he's directly broadside, if not anything quartering away. And let's see what happens when he, when you shoot. Still hasn't moved yet. Now he starts. I think the arrow's going in him now. Yeah. It looks like it hits right behind the shoulder. Perfect. Yeah, I think I think you got probably at least at least one lung in the liver and probably the back of that second lung would be my guess. Yeah. And you can tell he's a little uneasy on his feet, or right? yeah. Show both sides. Huh? So let me let me go back to. Can you see anything there? Oops. It's moving two clips on. Let me get to where he turns. See, I thought of him like right in there somewhere. But I don't see any blood coming out there, but. Is that the exit right there? Is that it right there, that little dark strip? I don't know. Like blood running down the side? Looks like just a shadow to me. It's hard to tell. See where he went in the woods and saw the dark spot. That's almost, but yep. Right yep. before the last rib or right around there, kind of low. That's the side it came out again, right? Yeah, right so it, yep. it, it may have got a good one lung, the back of the other one, and, and liver at the same time. This is what they were feeding on, all these little blooms. So they you think that's like... Alfalfa? They were they were tearing it up. I mean, it wasn't like they were out here just nibbling going across the field. They were out here like cattle grazing. And that's all, you can see the tops of them nipped off. All these tops. I mean, the blood looks good. I don't see like any bubbles in it, but it, does, it smells like, it smells like meat. What'd you, you smell it? It smells like deer meat which doesn't always smell real good anyway does it have a 
Does it have a little stinky smell to you? Maybe eat? a tiny bit, yeah. So you might have got on the way out, maybe? Yeah, the liver or something back there? I don't yeah. see any gut-looking stuff. No. I'm going to mark... Um, this is the impact spot. Yeah, you got blood here. Oh, yeah. Bright red blood. There's some bubbles. Yeah, there's bubbles in it. So... Yeah, there's some here. Now, look at that. Yep. Mark it with some paper. Yep. Yeah, I got butt up here. Okay. Looks like he looks like he stopped here. Whole bunch of blood. Oh wow. What's that in the blood? Or is that just that's not like Oh there's a bunch it of is. Blood to your left. Look, look right here. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, you got some, there's some matter in that. Yeah. Coughed it up, maybe? I'd hate to push him, but at the same time, it's warm. two lungs and two lungs and liver, it's a pretty lethal shot. Yeah, sometimes the liver can take six hours. It looks like he took... Right up through here. Hey, you see blood up there? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's blood up there. Just kind of scan the light around and see if you can see him from here. It looks the same. He's, he's walking, he's bleeding well. I mean, that to me that doesn't look like liver blood. It looks like lung blood to me. You got a, you got too, high, bright. It's too bright. You got high, real high blood right here. Looks like he he's he uh may have bedded down right here. He laid down. There's the uh entry side bleeding there's the exit see how much darker that is than that mm -hmm. tracking experience right now is telling me to back out i know it's, it's a difficult decision but especially for me but we, we come up on a bed right now and and if someone i was tracking for told me they came up on the bed and they continued tracking i'd be calling them you know uh, well i wouldn't call them stupid i'd say it was a stupid move and it'd be a stupid move for us to continue tracking i think we give it we definitely got long you can see where it bedded right here on the ground. It's got liver blood off one side. Doesn't mean it didn't get the lung on the side, the back of it. And you can see the, the what looks like really high oxygenated blood coming out the other side. Then you got a little spot where it coughed up blood. So he's he's bleeding out both sides good and he's coughing up blood. And all this lint coming off this tissue. See it? <laughs> anyway. You can you agree? Yeah, they're back to camp and they should back off for a little bit. I don't want to give them the whole night because the coyotes are yeah pretty bad out here i mean we i could hear, hear him hot howling earlier that way um who knows a coyote coming here and jumped him up not us a liver shot you need to give it at least six hours it's been you know typically four to six hours depending on what else was hit i'm confident that he's if he's not dead now he's gonna be very soon um, so we go back to camp and give it at least two hours and then by the time we get back out here we'll be pushing that five hour frame and so he should be done by then all right everyone uh, it's morning time as you can see and uh, I'll give a little brief exclamation why uh, yesterday we came back after waiting a little bit to track this deer we found the wound beds and stuff so we backed out we came back later and continued to track it and this was several hours later and we actually saw the deer and he was still alive but he was very weak so we went back to camp and got some sleep and we yeah. figure the deer is going to be dead because he he, he, he was, barely he was on his last leg for sure yeah could barely even move up barely even move but being it was night we couldn't dispatch him so i mean it's, it's it was hard to go see a, an animal like that but nothing we could do about it legally so we're going to walk in here and hopefully he's laying right where we we left him died not long after we left him. He's kind of stiff. This is the first time I've touched velvet before. There's the exit. Let's see where the entrance was at. Yeah, that's about where I saw it was. I said about three or four inches right behind the leg. Yeah. I think this is the buck that uh, Garrett and I saw the Thursday afternoon. Looks very similar. If it's not the same one, it's very close. And uh, 
I got to thank Garrett for talking me into coming out here. I kept going back and forth about coming out here or going to another spot. Being that this was such a small track of land, I was kind of leery, but Garrett reminded me that we did see deer here. We saw this buck here. It's a small track. It might be overlooked. It's worth a shot. We Somebody's got to hunt it before the before we leave here in North Dakota. So uh, that was me yesterday, and uh, I guess I'm very fortunate this buck uh, gave me an opportunity. Pretty good uh, trip so far, I guess. <laughs> now we got to get Garrett on a deer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop in the stand, or another stand next to Garrett. He's going to be in the saddle and try to film him shoot one, hopefully, before mm -hmm. the weekend's out. Mm -hmm. To see how Garrett did, you're going to have to tune into his channel. I'll put a link to all his videos down in the description of this. And very thrilled here in North Dakota. Got me a nice velvet buck, the first velvet buck, and a pretty good one at that, I think. 